Hello and welcome to another Battle Ride Basic Skill Guide, where we go over each skill and its basic functions. Today we'll be talking about Baco and hopefully bring clarity to his skills and how they work and synergize with each other. So let's begin today in the training arena. War Axe is cast by pressing the left click on your mouse button. It's your main attack and deals about 8 damage per swing. When it hits, it gives you a charge to your axe. Each charge increases the power of your blood axe. The max weapon charge is 3 normally. Now blood axe is your right click on your mouse. Normally hits for 16 damage and it's a ranged attack with a 2 second cooldown. Just think about that, every 2 seconds you could slap a fool. But it gets even better. Each weapon charge grants it 4 more bonus damage, adding up to 28 total damage. And on top of that, at 3 weapon charges it also applies a 1.5 second fading snare. Now to really maximize that damage, I found 3 swings, then a weapon throw, even at point blank to be insanely effective mainly because you can swing your war axe exactly 3 times in 2 seconds. This game is so polished that you can actually just hold down both the left and right click on the mouse button to execute this rotation flawlessly, without losing any DPS. Even with blood axe isn't charged at 3 stacks, it's still the best DPS output. Valent Leap is cast by pressing the space bar. You leap into the air and come crashing down like a mountain, striking for 22 damage and inflicting the snare. Unlike the fading snare, this snare reduces movement speed by 30% for 1 second. With just a 9 second cooldown, Leap has no problem wrecking people. Leap can even go over walls. You can even jump straight up in the air and come crashing back down on your opponent. Something else to note about Leap is that it actually pulls enemies towards you when you land allowing both you and your teammate to set up combos. Bulwark is cast with your Q. It does a few things. First off, you go into a defensive stand, holding up your shield like a boss doogie. Next it sends projectiles back at their caster, and melee attacks stun the attacker. Naturally it's a defensive move, but reflecting a major nuke back into someone's face can be really satisfying. Now it can also turn the tide of a battle in a moment's notice. One well placed bulwark can be all that stands between you and certain victory. Shield Dash is cast with the E on your keyboard. It's a quick dash forward and pushes enemies with you like a linebacker does. If one were to push an enemy into a wall, they would take 16 damage and probably wet their pants. The cooldown is only 8 seconds long and it's a great skill to intercept charging foes and protecting your teammates. It's also a great way to position yourself into combat to dish out some damage. Warshout is cast with the R on your keyboard. It costs 1 energy and it's totally worth it. However, with a 15 second cooldown, it's best to use it in the heat of battle. Warshout shields you and all nearby allies for 40 damage and it lasts for 2.5 seconds. This is one ability that can really save the game or teammate from other defeat. Your ultimate is called Heroic Charge. It's cast with your F key on the keyboard. You charge forward like a monster carrying any opponent in your way, dealing 35 damage. If you crash into anything else, be it a wall or another enemy, or if you just get tired and decide to stop, you will then do 25 more damage as area of effect and inflict a short stun on anyone too close. Now the stun only lasts for one fourth of a second, but believe me, that feels like forever and it's enough to stop an ultimate or someone casting a spell. The total damage of his ult is 60 damage to the unlucky soul in his path. Like all champions, Bako has shift skills as well. They are War Stomp and Shield Slam. War Stomp is cast by holding down the shift key and pressing the space bar. It can also be cast with a hotkey, usually 1 or 2 on the keyboard. It shares a cooldown with Heroic Leap and costs 1 energy to cast. It incapacitates in a large area effect around you. This effect lasts until they are hit or until the duration of 3.5 seconds is up. War Stomp could change the game from complete loss to other victory in a moment's notice. Like many of Baka's skills, they are situationally awesome. Incapacitated could be used on multiple foes while focusing in on the remainder of their team. 
The second shift skill is called Shield 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 Shield, shield Slam. It's cast by holding down the shift key and pressing E or usually 2 on the keyboard. Shield Slam modifies Shield Dash. Instead of pushing enemies back with you, you now knock them back for 12 damage, which is a little bit less than Shield Dash, but you don't have to dash them into the wall anymore. Now, this will also snare them. And that snare will last for 2.5 seconds. It's the ideal way to knock someone back that you don't want to be hitting you or your teammate. Okay, let's talk about battle rights. Battle rights are like talents for your heroes. You get to choose one before each round. In round one, you have three options. However, in round two, you still have three options, but they are totally different from round one. Let me explain what each battle right does to help you choose which one to take for your situation. Okay, your battle rights for round one are Adrenaline Rush, Shield Bash, and Wall Slam. Now for Adrenaline Rush, it modifies your Valiant Leap, causing your next war axe, that's your left click, to deal an additional 10 bonus damage, bringing your damage from 8 to 18. This is an excellent offensive skill to get. This is often the one I take, as it's usually the easiest one to use and doesn't require much thought. Something to note about Adrenaline Rush is it lasts for a few seconds after you leap, so you don't have to immediately attack your opponent to get the benefit of it. Now the second battle ride of round 1 is called Shield Bash. It modifies your bulwark to be able to recast it, allowing you to do a Shield Bash that deals 8 damage and inflicts a 50% weakened debuff that lasts for 2 seconds. Now if you remember, Weakened Debuff reduces the target's healing and damage output by 50%. This is excellent to take against healers or melee opponents that often you might use Shield Bash because you cast your Bulwark and your opponents refuse to strike you, so you can cancel your Bulwark and move into a Shield Bash allowing you, allowing you to bash your freaking face in for not attacking you. Alright, and the third battle right for round 1 is called Wall Slam. And what it does is it modifies your shield dash to inflict a 1.2 second when slamming an enemy into a wall. Now you do have to land the shield dash and slam them into a wall for this to work. However, they will be unable to move or use abilities for 1.2 seconds or until they take damage. This is kind of good because it means that they're not pulling out damage and it sets them up for a big hit. Okay, and for round 2, your battle rides are mobile defense, bravery, and battle lust. For mobile defense, it modifies your bulwark to increase the movement speed by 40%. Basically, instead of moving your normal movement speed when you tap bulwark, you now increased by 40%, allowing you to gain position for that good reflect. Next up is Bravery, which modifies your Valiant Leap to grant yourself a 33% damage reduction to yourself and nearby allies for up to 2.5 seconds. This is good if you're leaping into combat a lot, and especially good if you're playing with other people that like to leap in as well. Okay, and the last battle ride for round 2 is called Battle Lust. Now this modifies your Blood Axe to now heal you for 4 points of health plus 2 additional health for each weapon charge. Now remember, Blood Axe is your right click and it's your range attack. This is good especially if you're landing it a lot, as it will give you a lot of health back and it gives you some sustain. For the longer fights, especially against healers, this is a great talent to choose. Okay, and for your round 3 battle rights, you have Axe and Shield, Shield Sprint, and Weapon Mastery. Now let's talk about Axe and Shield first. War Axe hits reduce the cooldown of Bulwark by 1 second. That's your left click, your basic attack. Every time you strike, it reduces 1 point of cooldown off of your Bulwark. Now Bulwark's cooldown is only 8 seconds. This means the skill will allow you to reset your bulwark very quickly. I highly recommend it, especially against people that you're reflecting a lot, as reflect is just, well, bulwark is an awesome skill. Okay, and next up we have shield sprint, which modifies your shield dash. It will now travel 25% farther and it will deal 4 bonus damage. Now remember, your shield dash has to push them into a wall in order for it to do damage. This is particularly good, especially if you need more dashing powers, this gives you a heck of a dash to get out of ults or other AoE attacks. This skill is particularly good on a map that has a lot of tight corners, it allows you to push him into walls more often. Okay, and for your third battle ride of round 3, it's called Weapon Mastery. 
and basically what it does is it gives you Blood Axe grants one weapon charge on hit. This guarantees that you'll always have one weapon charge on hit because even if you use Blood Axe to do damage, you're going to get one weapon charge back. So it will never hit for 16 damage again, it will always hit for at least 20. Okay, and for round 4, battle rights are Ferocity, Inspiration, and Battle Ready. First up is Ferocity. It adds one weapon charge to your maximum, making it 4 instead of 3. It doesn't seem like it's that important because that just means you have to get 4 hits in before tossing your weapon to get the spike and damage. However, if you already took Weapon Mastery, chances are you already are at 1 stack meaning you can continue the swings three times and throw your weapon. You won't have any downtime and you'll put out a little bit more damage. It also is worth noticing if you had weapon mastery, you would only need to last hit twice before tossing your weapon to keep that snare up. Although the cooldown would allow for three swings. Next up is Inspiration. It increases your maximum energy by 25%. That's one more bar, giving you a total of 5 bars now. It increases energy gain from abilities by 10%, basically more energy. It also would allow you to ult and still be able to spend an energy point on a skill that costs 1 energy. This would mean that you'd be able to do something like Battle Cry, absorbing any damage coming at your way, and then ulting them into smithereens. And then we have Battle Ready, your last option when you have 3 weapon charges stacked up, you now move at 15% faster. Now it's not my personal favorite as I believe tossing the Blood Axe is the best DPS, plus if they are snared, aren't you already faster? I suppose it would give you some kiting ability though, so it might be worth it, as you could really stay on them with ease or even run away. And for round 5, you only have 2 options, they both affect your ultimate, and they are Reinforcement and Warbringer. Reinforcement gives you a shield for 30 damage and lasts up to 5 seconds or until it's destroyed. Warbringer, however, grants you 3 weapon charges on hit. Personally, I like the shield. However, 3 weapon charges could mean a strong hit from Blood Axe or movement speed from Battle Ready. It's up to you to experiment with different talents or battle rights and figure out which ones work best for you and in what situations. Anyways, thanks for watching this video about Bako and I hope it brought some clarity to Bako and how his basic skills work. Hopefully you liked this video, so check out the rest of the videos and totally hit the sub button because there will be a lot more videos coming.